All right, so we're here for run one, and our hand is kind of interesting. Uh, for the most part, I have not been a big fan of these one-landers. Uh, if one or two of these God's Willings was a Define Strike, then I would probably keep it, but the problem is that we basically have an extra creature that we don't really need, and these God's Willings, while they allow us to scry and pump our guys, uh, they don't actually do things like, you know, Define Strike would, where, like, they can trip and pump our guys, and that's really what we want, so I think this hand is going to end up being a little bit too slow, so uh, I think this is a pretty easy mulligan. And this hand is certainly not great, but it is, I think it's better than our last one. Like, uh, our land ETB is tapped, which is not great, but <clears throat> we get to play a one drop and then define strike it, or uh, if we draw a second land, then we can just basically go off. So uh, I like this hand much better than the first one. And then we'll just see what happens. Uh, certainly not the most ideal of situations, but uh, just imagine if... You know, we did not have a 23rd land. We had two two one-landers in a row. This could have just been a spell. We'd be on a mold of five, maybe. So, uh, 23rd land, certainly helping a little bit here. So, our opponent leads with a Temple of Enlightenment. And basically means a Mirror Match or Blue-Eye Control. Uh, mirror Match is kind of silly. It, it is very much about the play draw and, you know, just basically who comes out faster. Because... Neither player has a whole lot of ways to interact with the other person. So we draw our own temple, which is great. Uh, if he's blue-white control, the God's Willing is still not that good. And since I already have like a Stratus Walk, then I don't think I'm going to need a way to uh, break through for my opponent. So I think this is a safe bottom. Blue-white control does have some removal, certainly, but... Uh, I, I don't think I'm ever going to be in a point where I, I have enough mana to protect my guy with a God's Willing. Uh, second Temple of Enlightenment is certainly fine with me, which means that he's coming out pretty slow. Uh, I would be At this point, I would be kind of surprised if he's playing the Mirror Match, just because it, like his hand has developed rather awkwardly. But, you know, sometimes you have like a double Temple hand that you kind of have to keep. But I'd be pretty surprised if he had two Temples in... Not a one drop, although like you do have the temple to just scry and try and hit an untap land, so it could still be a mirror. It's not really going to affect what I do too much. I had one mana, so I played a one mana thing. So, and there's a banishing light, so it is not a mirror match. So, uh, God's willing might actually end up being pretty good here. I just need to. Make sure I get to draw an untapped land. Yeah, and he keeps he keeps killing my guys. Uh, and and now now we're kind of in a rough spot because if he has another removal spell, we're just kind of sunk, and we've missed a few too many land drops, so we're falling behind, and that's not good. But he already had a banishing light in the last breath. There's there's not too much more spot removal, so. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be able to untap here, and that's great. Um, a little concerned with possibly getting end hostilities next turn. Uh, I can make my guy four power, certainly. Uh, so now we just need to find an untapped land and uh, a stubborn denial. But we only have two stubborn denials main deck. So Defiant Strike is certainly reasonable. But that's not really what we're looking for right now. And we also have two things that can trip and pump our guys. So uh, I think it's pretty safe to put that Defiant Strike on the bottom. Draw a card with this Defiant Strike. And we hit a Plains. Um, so he can't have Last Breath. So I think we're fine just playing this. The Ordeal. Oh, yeah, it's, it is two mana. This is not a hero. I was thinking that was a hero for whatever reason. <laughs> the hero draws end up being kind of nutty. Uh, so there's a Pilgrims. So there's another creature, sort of. Uh, it kind of counts, but it does not get the heroic bonuses. But uh, we, we do really need something. Um, 
I think I think this might be a keep, but I could certainly see just trying to find another heroic guy. But uh, we're gonna draw two cards here. That's that's gonna be true no matter what. I don't think there's anything he can do to really stop us. Uh, and then if he end hostilities my creature, I definitely want to have a follow up. So I think it is worth keeping this pilgrim on top, even though it's not a very powerful follow up. Uh, we do draw a favorite hoplite, so that's good. Now I wish I would have bought him the pilgrim, but you know hindsight, twenty twenty, and all that. So now I can play hoplite if I draw an untapped land. I can also stratus walk it and protect it from God's willing, or protect it with God's willing, uh, assuming it's not another end hostilities, but. Uh, hostilities and vault are kind of tough to deal with, but. Uh, that's what the Suburb Denials are for, and that's why I want to make those good. So here, any number of things could happen. <clears throat> Presumably he just has counter spells. Uh, I assume if he had End Hostilities, he would have used it. It's a little too risky to try and play End Hostilities with counter spell backup, just because, like, 5 and 3 is so much mana. You know, he's still 2 turns off by then. He might just be super low and uh, be in range of losing to uh, Stubborn Denial. But uh, I guess if he's saving for counterspell backup, then then maybe not. But so here I think my guy's relatively safe, and I'm not going to commit any more creatures to the board. Uh, I do think I want this land. It's not super exciting. Uh, so it looks like he might just be trying to dig through time. And find an end hostilities, which is understandable. So we'll just get in there for six. Uh, now he's on a two turn clock. Okay, so uh, he's he's not playing around stubborn denial. Uh, I guess like my thing would be a hard counter spell anyway, but so there's really no reason for him to to not you know, use all his mana, but yeah, one of the one of the cool things about Stubborn Denial is like they'll often tap out for like end hostilities or vault or dig through time or you know Jace's ingenuity and just get hit with the force spike aspect of it. Uh and that that'll generally happen once and then they're like, oh, this card exists, now I have to play around it, so in this situation it doesn't actually matter because my guy is huge. So would not be surprised if he found an end hostilities. Not sure if he's gonna wait a turn and yeah, he doesn't look like he's going to. And he has another font of fortunes. Uh, so I'm <clears throat> gonna get this hoplite out there. I could try and keep open like Defiant Strike to try and play around something like Last Breath, but uh, I think at this point I just kind of have to commit. I kind of want to keep him with two mana because I feel like he might have something like a Banishing Light and a Counterspell. So maybe I'm better off just going for the Defined Strike and trying to draw land. It's pretty awkward because it doesn't use my mana very efficiently. But that, that hedges against me not actually drawing land, so uh, I don't think I'm in the worst spot here. Uh, something like Elspeth could be, could be pretty strong. I do have a bunch of God's Willings to maybe get my guy through and a Stratus Walk, so. Uh, so there's the Banishing Lights. Gonna pro white my guy. Ordeal of Thassa is certainly good. Kind of surprised the Nazi had dissolved there. Maybe he just assumed that I had two God's Willings. Kind of hard to say. It is, it is tough to turn down two cards. 
So I'm going to keep that on top. Could be really greedy here and play hero before the ordeal, but uh, I think it's best against these control decks, uh, especially once I'm in this, this position where I can continually keep pumping my guys to just slowly bleed out their removal and like make them use their sweepers as a one for one. So no dissolve there either. Uh, he's at four life, and I have a lot going on. I have a bell strike too. And at this point, not really worried about Elspeth, not worried about, like, a Pearl Lake Ancient, or anything like that. He keeps trying to Banishing Light me. So these God's Willings actually ended up being pretty good, and yeah, he just he just loses. We just have <laughs> a couple, couple guys that we made pretty big that we protected with our one mana God's Willings. So sometimes, you know, that's all it takes. Uh, so against these control decks, basically just side out the bad tutor targets. Uh, you do want as many Ordeal of Thassas as possible. So I like bringing in the other Pilgrim. The matchup is kind of grindy, so the Treasure Cruises are pretty good. Uh, the Stubborn Denials can help you fight and Hostility, so, so those are great. Uh, you want all the walks to Cantrip Pump your guys to turn on your Stubborn Denials. And then it's basically just like you side out the O4s because they're not great. Although I could, I could see you siding out a God's Willing too, And then having something like a Glare. Like, one glare seems okay if he has a bunch of banishing lights. Might have something like Brimaz, which, uh, if he has, like, removal plus Brimaz, that might put me on the back foot a little too early. So maybe I want a banishing, or a glare of heresy to kill that and banishing light. Uh, can maybe also kill an Elspeth, but if it gets to that point, uh, you know, <clears throat> the three guys he gets off Elspeth, or just, like, the minus might be too much. So, Glare's not, not a great answer to Elspeth, because they normally get value out of it, but I think it's worth boarding in one Glare. You could also see just having an, an O4 as, like, a random dude, but uh, just not not super exciting. Going down to 12 guys is, like, pretty low, or, like, 12 heroic guys. I don't really count the Pilgrims as creatures all that much, because they don't deal a ton of damage. Um, also, in this matchup, since I'm on the draw, I could potentially board out a land, but... Uh, as we saw that game, I was a little light on land, so I'm going to keep it at 23 still. Uh, I'm still not sure if I should actually be boarding out a land or not, especially in a matchup like this where you basically want to hit all your land drops. So I think this is about right. The only thing I'm really worried about is going a little bit lower on creatures than maybe I should be. Uh, so this hand is pretty gorgeous. We have three lands, perfect mana, have like a scry action... Ordeal of Thassa. And now we even have a protection card. So, uh, I'm not sure what I really want to scry into here. So, I, I don't think I'm going to lead with that scry land. And my turn two is probably going to be Hoplite with a mana open. Uh, favorite Hoplite. I guess these are both Hoplites. So, yeah. I'm just going to play the game life land. I'm not sure exactly what I want to scry into yet. So, I don't think there's any point to using that. And I'll get my favorite hoplite out here. If he tries to last breath it, I can use God's Willing. Uh, or he just nullifies it, and that could be really bad. So maybe I should have just led with that off the cove and then played my planes. That's kind of like a giveaway. Yeah, that, that ended up being pretty poor, because now I can't play this with God's Willing. So I should have just played the hoplite off the cove, and then if he countered it, then play the temple. He, he played a Nyx Fleece Ram, which is like... Kind of annoying, but doesn't really do all that much. Because, uh, like, you grow your guys to be so big. They hit they hit for so much damage already that this, this thing doesn't really do a whole lot. Uh, so we drew an untapped land, which is good, but also kind of awkward. Because now next turn, uh, I'm not going to be able to, you know, have all untapped mana all the time. So I might have kind of screwed myself with that hoplite play, but hopefully that's not the case. And then we'll see. I, I might just go for a Stratus Walk here to try and get over the ram. But Well, now now I can just freely ordeal, which is great. Ooh, another ordeal. Do I actually want this, though? So I'm not going to get to activate it next turn. So now if I had, you know, four untapped mana next turn, I could just double ordeal a Thassa, draw four cards, and just be in a commanding position. But uh, I kind of kind of messed this game up. I was trying to be too cutesy and, like, use my planes to play my favorite hoplite and then have Cove open to make it not as obvious that I had God's Willing, but... 
Huh. Like, Ordeal is definitely going to be good if he removes my Hoplite. But, uh, I, if he removes my Hoplite, I don't have a good creature to put it on. So that's kind of the problem. That That is what is making me think that I should potentially bottom this. I think I'm going to just because I have a Heliod's Pilgrim. So if I ever get into a spot where I want to draw more cards, then... Then I can just use the Pilgrim to find an Ordeal. If Flooded Strand... I don't think I need that either. And draw Flooded Strain anyway, so. And yes, I would love the Stubborn Denial. That would be great. Now we can play this Flooded Strand. See, and just like right away, we have this 5-5. The Ram kept him at 20 off his two fetches, but now it's like... Do you chump so you can end hostilities? Like, this ram didn't really do anything. Like, I guess it gained him 7 life if he blocks here, but... Not sure if that's that's a card that you really want to be sideboarding in. I'm not sure what he boarded out to bring those in, but it does not seem super effective to me. But alright, looks like he's just going to take it. So ram has gained him 3 life at this point. Fountain up to 18. These control decks have a decent amount of incidental life gain, which is pretty cool. Alright, so now we could go for a walk. Uh, Stratus walk, of course. Not really sure we need to do that, though. We have this 5-5 five, five hitting him. Uh, I'm almost certainly going to... Well, I could Pilgrim this turn, I suppose, but... Yeah, I guess I can counter his end hostility, so there's there's no r real reason for me to not Pilgrim, I, I guess. And then after that, I'm going to play the Temple and Scry, so I might as well just crack this Flooded Strand now. Treasure Cruise would be pretty nice. We have four cards in the yard. Uh, presumably over the next couple turns, we'll have a few more, so that'll be cool. Uh, I guess one of the, the reasons why I should maybe not play this Pilgrim is because of Dissolve and whatnot. Uh, just make it so he doesn't have a turn where he can use his mana very well. Just make it so those counter spells rot in his hand. I guess that's potentially very good. So yeah, maybe I just don't even play this Pilgrim this turn. We'll see. So we attack and now he chumps. Uh, so yeah, I, I feel like there's an end hostilities coming. Uh, Defined Strike seems pretty nice. It's like a free 2 damage, basically. Puts another card in our yard for Treasure Cruise. So if he manages to resolve end hostilities this turn somehow, then it would be kind of awkward, but I, I think it's going to be really tough for him to get through the Stubborn Denial. It could just be like Banishing Light plus, plus Dissolve or something. Or Elspeth. I'll counter that too, I think. Yeah, because you could just kill my guy. If he decides to get a little cheeky and, like, make tokens to block it and stuff, like, I can just Stratus walk it and kill his Elspeth. I don't think he's going to do that. Uh, so now I can Pilgrim and draw two cards off Ordeal. That would certainly be pretty nice. And I can cut his life points in half if I don't draw a God's Willing or uh, Stubborn Denial uh, by using this Defiant Strike. So I'm just going to use... I'm going to play my my land first uh, because I could draw either Stubborn Denial or God's Willing off of this Ordeal of Thassa. So I want to have a dual land untapped. Look at me go. Just outdrawing the blue eye control deck. No big deal. Get that strand on the bottom. Definitely don't need that. Attack him for currently 7. And let's make it 9 since we didn't draw anything. Alright, so now if he wraps us, we're in, in kind of kind of bad shape because we just have these three pump things <clears throat> and no creatures. Uh, but he's just playing another Nick Lee Ram, so it doesn't look like he has end hostilities, which is great. And uh, we drew a glare, which could either kill the ram or kill the banishing light. 
I don't think there's really any instant speed interaction he can have at this point. So I think I'm just going to glare this. And then if he counters it, then I can stratus walk my guy. Yeah, so these rams have just not been very good. Okay, so he doesn't counter it and doesn't concede. So what is happening? What's going on here? Oh, he sent me a message. He said, LOL. So now, now what am I watching out for here? Blue White doesn't play Aether Spouts and he has an Evolving Wild, so it can't be that. I don't know. I think I'm just going to attack. Let's see what happens here. And he just loses. Okay. All right. So that was round one. Uh, this this is kind of like a typical way for at least the blue white matchup to go, where uh, their stuff is mostly sorcery speed, and you have things like stubborn denial, which is good against their entire deck. So uh, you just need these cantripping things to make sure you pump your guy and have enough resources. Uh, if you get to sneak in a hit with Ordeal of Thassa, that's great. You just end up outdrawing the control decks, which is pretty insane. Uh, Blue Black is a little bit tougher, both because they have Perilous Vault, which is something they can just like plop into play whenever they have a free moment, and they have a lot more instant speed stuff. Uh, so that matchup's a little bit tougher, but for the most part, uh, this unless they're like really prepared for this matchup, this is kind of like how things go, where you just pace your guys out. Uh, eventually connect with an ordeal of Thassa, and then the game just kind of like spirals out of control for them f from there. So uh, you even have things like Treasure Cruiser, which could have put me like even further ahead. So uh, there are certainly some moments there where it was like end hostilities would make it so I didn't have any creatures, and that would be kind of scary, but they don't always have it, you know? So uh, that's about it, and this is not out of the ordinary. Like this is basically how these matchups play out.